Hello and welcome to our final AFCB TV preview show before Christmas. With two games last week and two to come, both myself and Matchday commentator Chris Temple will be going through it all in the next half an hour. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 2-0 defeat at Molyneux last weekend. We'll also be discussing the Cherries in the Carabao Cup and that defeat at Stamford Bridge. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to a busy festive period with both Brighton and Spurs to come. Well, first, we'll start back at Molyneux last weekend and that 2-0 defeat. Chris, it was a, another tough afternoon. What went wrong? Yeah, difficult afternoon. The, the weather went wrong, first of all. It was a horrible day to be a, to be a supporter, particularly. It was freezing cold, driving down with rain as well. The players won't notice that sort of thing, I'm sure, once they, they get out on the pitch, uh, I'm sure. But yeah, Wolves, very organised team. Um, obviously, you know, the unfortunate mistake by, by Charlie, which has been the, one of the issues that's blighted the last couple of games, an individual mistake. Um, and once you concede the first goal against a team like Wolves, as well organised as they are, they got that 1-0 lead. They then sat back. They play this sort of counter-attacking style where they, they'll happily let you have the ball and try and nick you on the break. Bournemouth had a lot of the ball but um, weren't able to be quite as clinical with it as they have been. Didn't really use it effectively um, in terms of chances. You know, the Rui Patricio in the Wolves goal didn't have a massive amount to do. Junior hit the bar with a free kick. Apart from that, not a whole lot of other chances. So, yeah, it was a day where you know some of the possession was nice but just didn't have an didn't have an edge um and obviously Wolves nipped the second on the, on the counter attack so it just smacked of a team that were just just short of a bit of confidence and just just a lot of bit lost a bit of their zip um but hopefully that was uh, the last time we'll see that sort of performance for for a while and obviously Callum Wilson he didn't start the game does that that game last week kind of proved how important he is for the club. Yeah, as we've said before, you know they haven't got anybody exactly like him. The form he's been in, of course, you're going to miss somebody like that who's got 10 goals this season, if you in, include his England goal as well. Um, you know he came on towards the end and, and actually did give them a little bit of a spark when he came on. Um, but I think it was probably the right call not to risk him. Hamstring, you know, is, is a pretty perilous injury to have when you've been um, when you've got a big schedule of games coming up. So yeah, I think he did add something when he came on. But again, he, he didn't really get fed the. Uh, the, the scraps, if you like, to be able to turn into uh, some sort of feast. And we saw that Lerma and Sermon partnership in midfield. What did you make of it? Yeah, I think they've had a good couple of games, actually. They were probably the two who, who did sort of make Bournemouth tick. Um, you know, Jefferson picked up his, his standard yellow card. Um, the last two have been less than subtle, I think. He, he was, to be fair, he was put in a bit of a spot by Jordan Ibe, and he, I think he gave him a bit of a Spanish volley. I'm not sure how good Jordan Ibe's Spanish is, possibly not that good. Um, but, uh, yeah, Jordan Ibe certainly knew about it. But Lerma and Sermon, yeah, you know, a couple of games together. Um, Growing as a partnership, let's not forget Andrew Sermon, as we've said before, hasn't played a lot. So he, he personally needs to get up to speed as well. But he, he was good, I thought, at his old, at his old club. Um, two of the players who kept the ball moving, um, kept things going, trying to feed it to the creative players to make something happen. But ultimately, um, it just didn't, unfortunately. And Tyron Mings went off with an injury during the game. It's it's great to see that it's not as, as bad as it first was. Yeah, it looked nasty at the time. And you, you think for a guy like him who'd not had a lot of luck at all um, with injuries, you think he looked, he looked in real discomfort. I mean, it was a blow on the hip uh, or to the sort of lower back area. It looked really painful. Um, the Wolves fans were giving him a bit of stick. And I, I did, I've had to block Wolves fans all week on Twitter because I called them a bit classless for booing Mings because he was clearly in trouble. Um, but uh, yeah, good to see him back in the squad against Chelsea and that it's hopefully not too serious. Well, as you said, next up, the Cherries tra travel to Stamford Bridge to play Chelsea in the Carabao Cup. It wasn't quite the result they were after, but Eddie Howe had plenty of positives after the game. Eddie, a tough way to lose tonight. What are your thoughts on the game? God, yeah, hugely disappointed. It's um, disappointing. It's two years in a row, we've got the same feeling coming here. You know, we did, did ever so well in the game as we did last year and... We were in the match, we were committed, everyone gave everything to, to achieve a positive result. Unfortunately, Eason had ours had, uh, has won the game for Chelsea again. And your side seemed to grow into the game. What was the message at half-time? Didn't want to change too much tactically. I thought we were OK. It was more individually, just, just a little tweaks where we could improve. And second half, I thought we were, yeah, we were fine. As you say, I thought we, um, we grew into the game. We played with more confidence the longer it went on. And... Had a number of, of really good counter-attack opportunities. So I'm very, very pleased with the team, with individuals within the team. Uh, it was a really good night for us. And as you said, it was it took Eden Hazard to, to break the deadlock and it was a deflected goal. That's a that's a cool way to concede, isn't it? Yeah, that's the way it's going for us at the moment. Unfortunately, we're on the, the wrong end of, of any bounce uh, either way. So in their box, we had a number of balls ricocheting around that it never quite fell to, to our player. And then at the other end, yeah, the winning goal is a cruel one on, on everyone because defensively, we were very good tonight. And it's another strong performance against one of the big teams. That's something that can, your team can take big confidence from, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The performances against the big teams this year have been have been strong. The results haven't haven't followed that pattern. It's been it's very different to other years where I remember we beat Liverpool and I don't think we played well, but we beat them. And Arsenal last year at home, I don't think we played particularly well, but we beat them. This year, 
we're playing well and we're not getting the results. So it's, it's a it's a difficult one to take, but we have to. We have to be men, men about it and take it on the chin and, and make sure that we double our efforts to make sure we uh, we come out of this spell. And there are a number of players that played tonight that haven't quite perhaps had the minutes that they would have liked this season. Lise Mousset, Jordan Ive. What did you make of them? Very good. Yeah, very good. I thought that was Lise's best performance for the club. Um, and Jordan, maybe even Jordan's best performance for the club in this respect. He's playing out of position and um, I thought he was excellent defensively against one of... Chelsea's best players, so uh, really, really pleased with both of those players. But there's others: Diego Rico, Jack Simpson, Arta Boric, um, David Brooks, Junior Stanislas, playing out of position. Uh, very, very, very pleased. You mentioned Arta Boric there. He made some big saves tonight. Yeah, we need. Whenever you come to, to these games, you need your goalkeeper to play well. And right from early in the match, um, he made some key saves for us, which gave us the confidence to build and grow into the game. So very, very pleased for him. And now the focus turns to Saturday, Brighton at home. How? Delighted we be to get back in front of the home fans. Yeah, pleased to play at home. Um, I think we know how important the, the game is for us. Uh, we've already spoke about it in the dressing room. Um, if we take the confidence and attitude from today's game, uh, we look forward to the match. Well, that was Eddie Howe after Wednesday's performance in the Carabao Cup. And Chris, it was a much improved one, wasn't it? Yeah, to be honest, it was it was everything you could have wanted from a performance except the result. Um, the noise from the Cherries fans at the end, that will tell you exactly what they thought of the performance and the effort levels and absolutely everything else that the team put in. Of course, let's not forget a team with several changes, a team with lots of players who haven't played a lot of football. Think of Diego Rico, he's hardly been on, on the pitch recently. Had a difficult day at Wolves in the league, actually, when he came on. Um, Jordan Ibe, who hasn't played in that role a lot. I mean, Rico and Ibe, for me, are the two players who um, haven't played any football but had to be up and down that flank in those wing-back positions. I thought they were both absolutely terrific. Um, Arta Boric, we've got to mention him. Uh, he's been excellent this season when he's had his chance. He's you know, limited to League Cup games. I spoke to him before the game and he said, you know, all I've got to do is just take my chances when I get them, show what I'm capable of. From his point of view, show he's worth a new contract possibly as well. He's only on a one-year deal at the moment. 39 in February, but goodness me, there's a couple of terrific saves in there. One from Giroud right at the end, the one where he came out for, to, to deny Willian as well. He stood up massively tall. Um, yeah, terrific saves to keep the team in it. And you need your keeper to have a good day at places like that. Um, you need to keep the, you know, when they do get chances, keep them out. But and right at the end, there was a couple of scrambles. You know, there was an almighty scramble at the end where the ball could have gone anywhere. Um, and a couple of opportunities, you know, Aretha Balaga made a save or two as well. So all in all, it was everything but the result. Um, Eddie said he wanted the performance and the result together. Well, he got the performance that time, but not the result. So hopefully now as we move into Christmas, the, the two can come together. And in terms of Chelsea's goal, did you feel like, that, like there was a foul in the build up there? There was a big case for it. I think I said in the commentary that was surely a foul on King as the, the play was... Uh, the play was moving forward, but it certainly definitely looked like it um, from that point of view. There was a bit of, bit of bad luck, but lots happened after that um, up to the goal. So people were saying, why wasn't it referred to VAR, that decision? Well, that's not a decision that can be referred to VAR because it didn't directly wasn't directly involved in a goal incident. There were too many things that happened. And of course, the cruel deflection as well off Charlie's hand. And of course, if the ball goes wide, there's a, there's a case that could have been a penalty anyway. So uh, yeah, all in all, it just didn't bounce. And they brought on Hazard and Pedro. Is that a compliment to how well Bournemouth were playing, that they felt the need to bring those two off the bench? Absolutely, yeah. Pretty early on as well, Hazard was, when you, and Pedro came on a few minutes after the start of the second half. They're not the guys you want to, particularly Hazard, is not the guy you want to see coming on. Um, even with supposedly 70% fit with a foot injury, he's just probably you know the best player in the world at the moment, or certainly in the top three, I would say. Um, it just his ability with the ball is is frightening. Um, he he always does well against Bournemouth. He always seems to make something happen. Um, and as well as he did do when he came on, it was a shame in a way that of course his it was a deflected goal from him, and it, he, even he needed a bit of luck to to score the match winner. But yeah, it, it definitely is a compliment to where they were playing. They that Chelsea had to to reach for their stars, and of course for, that Bournemouth were able to reach for their stars still very much in the game when the likes of uh, Joshua King and people were brought off the bench and, and Ryan Fraser as well. And we saw Nathan Ake play in central midfield. What did you make of that one? I think he did pretty well, considering he hasn't played there a lot. I mean, he played there quite a bit at Chelsea in the in the youth ranks, by all accounts. He did a lot of running. Um, and when you look at the midfield three they had, with, with Stanislas and Brooks as well, um, they were probably all looking around at each other for a bit of advice at times. I know David Brooks has played there before, but playing there in youth football is not the same as playing against Fabregas and Kovacic and others. So, yeah, I thought, I thought they did, you know, as well as you could have asked them to, really. It was a makeshift midfield. Needs must in terms of the personnel available and the need to rotate and rest a few players. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought the midfield gave a, gave a great account of themselves. And Neddy Howe was very complimentary about Lee saying saying it was his best performance in a Bournemouth shirt. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think I think before um, Wednesday it would be fair to say Lee had gone backwards this season. I think he'd been less of a threat when he'd come on. It had been uh, he hadn't really done too much to suggest he would be able to change a game. 
but he he was all action on on Wednesday. He really was. Um, they needed him to be. They needed everybody to be all action. But he, you know, pacey. I remember one run he bulldozed through about three people. Um, you know, he was he was creating things. He was working. He looked hungry as well, which is often a criticism that maybe he looks at the way he sort of runs and looks a bit disinterested at times. But I thought he he looked hungry. He looked like somebody wanted to prove a point. Um, and if if he can suddenly start to be a factor, um, you know, you need someone that if it's not Wilson, it's not King. Musa is the next. Uh, in terms of you know that type of player, so yeah, you need him to be contributing to give you a real option off the bench rather than Eddie sitting in these seats that we're sat in right now, turning around and going, "Who's there?" Oh, I haven't really got anybody. And with some big away games coming up, they've got to go to Wembley, they've got to go to Old Trafford. They can take so much heart from that performance at Stamford Bridge, can't they? Yeah, they can, but of course they need to go. They need to bridge, if you like, that from the bridge to Wembley uh, to the Arch with a performance against Brighton because if it, if it goes back to square one against Brighton then the momentum is sucked back out of the sails but I'm confident and hopeful that they will use that performance at Chelsea to to produce a game against Brighton that we'll talk more about in a moment uh, that's a bit more like fans have come to see um, because they will need as you say a bit of momentum to take to Wembley and to take to Old Trafford it's not a it's not a, a favourable festive schedule for sure. Well we spoke about that festive schedule there and Callum Wilson is one who has been getting in the spirit let's take a look at what happened when he went down to Bournemouth Christmas markets earlier in the week. Yeah. I know. I put on my Christmas hat as well, man. How's, my, how's, what's, how's his hat saying? Is it blessed? <laughs> Merry Christmas guys, I hope you all have a lovely time. My favourite part about Christmas is being able to have some junk food, some trimmings, some chocolates and things like that. Being a professional, you can't have it as much, but I'm sure that you guys will make up for it for me. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. Well, that was Callum Wilson down at Bournemouth Christmas Market. He's on the front of tomorrow's programme and you can see the full interview on AFCB TV next week. Chris, it's a, it's a busy week coming up. How important is tomorrow's game? Well, first of all, it's got me in the Christmas spirit, looking at that Callum Wilson in that footage down the Christmas Market. Yeah, I think tomorrow's, tomorrow's massive, as we mentioned earlier on. You know, a, a performance at Chelsea, you've got Spurs and Man United to come. You need to keep it going now. You need to keep moving in the, the forward direction, keep that momentum going. Um, there's no point in going back to square one. I don't think they will. I think they'll produce a poor performance here tomorrow. Uh, the, the league table is, is interesting now because it's in three sections. There's the top six, um, with, of course, uh, Man United just sort of uh, at the top end of the rest, if you like. Um, and then there's a, a bit of a gap. I think there's eight teams and there's a gap to the bottom six in the table as well. So it's sort of a six, an eight and a six. And Bournemouth and Brighton are uh, right in the middle of that middle eight. Um, but, of course, only still three points off sixth place. Still seven points ahead of where they were at this time last season, which is again the the context really. That you know, yes, it's been disappointing recently, but still way ahead of. And you know, seven points doesn't sound a lot, but that's that is a lot in Premier League terms. So the context is, you know, from the table point of view, still very healthy indeed, still a long way from trouble, and still very much in re the reach of uh, sixth position. But Brighton two points behind Bournemouth, so would go ahead of them with a with a victory. Um, Brighton have been a bit inconsistent this season. Uh, they've won two away games already, um, which is as many as they won in the whole of last season. One at Newcastle and, and one at Huddersfield as well. So, um, yeah, they've they've got players that uh, can can turn games. They're missing his Kiedo, who's a bit in and out. Uh, on his day, he's brilliant. On his other days, he's, he's not so effective. But, of course, the one person that uh, Bournemouth fans know and will have an eye on will be Glenn Murray, um, who has actually scored seven of his eight goals, I think, at home this season. He's not quite as effective away from home. Uh, he did score a last-minute equaliser at Southampton, though. That's his one away goal that he has scored this season. Uh, but, of course, Brighton's threat comes from set pieces. Um, Duncan Duffy have scored a large proportion of their goals. Shane Duffy's suspended tomorrow. He's the third of his uh, uh, games for, for getting a red card for a headbutt. Um, but Lewis Dunk, who made his England debut alongside Callum Wilson. Um, and, of course, Cherry's got their own sort of Brighton mole with Steve Cook, who, you know, his family and whatever are all still down that way. He'll know Lewis Dunk very well from their Brighton days. So... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of nice connections, but the one thing we're not having is it's not a derby of any sort because, you know, the uh, the, the national papers, they, they see both uh, both cities on the south coast and a town in Bournemouth's case, a city in uh, Brighton's case, see it being by the sea and they go, it's got to be a derby. It's 100 miles apart. It's nowhere near a derby. We're not having it. 
And in terms of our team news, it'll be very interesting to see what Eddie Howe does because there were a lot of players that State took a claim for themselves on, on Wednesday, weren't there? Yeah, a difficult, a difficult one because, you know, you look at the league team that was, albeit a bit patched up, that didn't perform fantastically well at Wolves. And obviously, you know, there'll be a couple of players a bit short of confidence. But those that played on Wednesday, I don't think could have done much more, apart from win the game, obviously, um, in their performance to, to give Eddie a, a selection headache for this weekend. Um, Simon Francis, by all accounts, you know, he's still touch and go, but I think he, he's probably in a good, good place to come back into the squad anyway. Um, so that adds another sort of defensive option. They were sort of forced to go with a three last week because they didn't have enough defenders fit to, to make up a four, really. Um, people like Diego Rico and Jordan Ibe, who were excellent, um, have they done enough to force their way into the league team? You know, one performance... They certainly couldn't. They certainly haven't done their cases any harm. Um, but of course, you know, you look at the likes of David Brooks, who actually has been rotated recently. Um, he came in and did very well in that central role at Chelsea. So I'll probably expect to see him back in um, up front. You know, Lise Mousse knocking on the door very much. Callum seems like he's fit and no problem with his fitness now. Joshua King possibly hasn't quite been effective in the, as effective in the last two or three games. So there's a possible option there that Lise Mousse. You know, while he is a confidence player and he seems to be full of confidence at the moment, he could, he certainly will give Eddie something to think about, I'm sure. Um, so I think, you know, I, I can't imagine too many changes, but I would have thought there would certainly be one or two um, and the players that had their chance on Wednesday night. You know, a lot, I've seen lots of people on Twitter saying, Arta Boric, you know, he, he's earned himself a, a place in the team. Asmir Begovic has had a couple of moments in the last couple of games. You know, you think of Man City and uh, obviously the Liverpool game as well. I don't think you could judge Asmir Begovic just on two little, not even mistakes, just two even little slips slightly, whatever, um, because he's been pretty solid the rest of the season. Harsh as that is on Arta Boric, I, I wouldn't necessarily see a changing goal. Um, but yeah, there are things to think about for sure. And with Spurs and Man United to come, they'll be really after those three points tomorrow, won't they? Yeah, that certainly has a you know a, a, a important look about it. It's the first Saturday three o'clock home game since the Southampton game, which feels like a, a long time ago. That was back in uh, towards the end of October, wasn't it? So yeah, with the twelve thirties and the Sunday afternoons, it's all been messed around a little bit. So it'd be nice for Cherries fans to get back in a routine. I keep I don't have to work out what time I'm supposed to wake up for a home game when you've got to get here at nine thirty, allowing for the cones which are gone as well. It's all it's all happy days now. Three o'clock, no cones on the spur road trying to get here. Um, but yeah, in terms of the the games to come up. Um, you know, you take anything, you take a point for sure at Spurs and Man United. Uh, Man United obviously going through a bit of upheaval at the moment. Spurs game at Wembley last year wasn't a great spectacle. Um, Spurs 1-0, played very functionally. Quite like Wolves, happy to let Bournemouth have a bit of the ball. Spurs play a bit side-to-side, parsey-parsey stuff. Um, but of course, they've got so many quality players. So, um, yeah, it was a tight game at Wembley last year. Great place for the fans to go, though, albeit with no trains, a bit tricky to get to. Parking around Wembley, I hope you've got to take a mortgage out for that, by the way. It's about 40 quid to park at Wembley before you get a shock, take enough cash. Um, of course, you'll be paying for the Cherries media team to park, I'm sure, Zoe. Um, of course, of course. <laughs> as a Christmas gift. Um, but yeah, no, some great games. Spurs and Man United away, great games. And that actually then is, you know, that is the big the big teams out the way for a little while and of course Brighton coming back relatively quickly in the the FA Cup as well and that Spurs game they've they've struggled against them in the league but what can they do differently uh, on Boxing Day to try and get get some results yeah I think back to the the game here the, the only point they've had off them actually the nil-nil draw going back a couple of seasons here um, when it was that was where they just threw absolutely everything it was a great nil-nil um, it was a, I think that was a Saturday lunchtime game as well uh, a brilliant nil-nil the one thing you know Spurs haven't been that massively fluent you know they, they huffed and puffed to beat Burnley at home uh, last week the Cherries went there they didn't park the bus but they certainly you know the, the bus was in the proximity of their goal let's put it that way um, uh, they went there relatively defensive I think it was a 5-4-1 if I remember rightly in terms of the, the setup um, I don't know whether they'll they need to with the players they've got they need to go they go to Chelsea and play a three at the back and you know show some good form on the counter um, that's probably the way they need to go away at Spurs and, and maybe similar at United as well two teams who were you know happy to have the ball but you know, will hurt you if you if you give them a glimmer. So, yeah, most importantly is to go into those Spurs and United games with with a performance and a result together from this this game against Brighton. Because, like we saw for the Huddersfield game, the three points were important. But actually, Eddie wanted the performance and the result together. He only got the result there. Chelsea got the performance, but not the result. So it's about time the two things came together. And in terms of that Spurs game, they've got Harry Kane, they've got Christian Eriksen, they've got Deli Ali, they've got stars all over the pitch. It's important to nullify those threats, isn't it? The one thing Bournemouth have got used to in the last few weeks with the fixture list they've had is keeping an eye on star players. Mentally, very tiring games. Mentally, you know, you've got to be absolutely on it. Um, you know, with all these players that can hurt you in the in the blink of an eye. So I think Bournemouth have, uh, have been wise to that. You know, actually, Liverpool obviously were very comfortable here. Um, but the other big games, you know, United, Arsenal, um, City obviously were comfortable as well. But the home games, so they've they've managed to sort of keep an eye on some of the key threats. 
away from home where the home team will dictate it more. Um, you know, it's a, it's a bit harder sometimes to keep those guys out of the game, as we saw with Eden Hazard at, at Chelsea the other day. Um, but, you know, again, soaking up pressure is something they've done. You know, at Chelsea, they had to soak up a bit of pressure. Home fans get a bit a bit narky the, the rest of the way the game goes, staying at 0-0 for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say Bournemouth's form in patches, not against Liverpool and not against City, but in the other big games, certainly gives them some, some sort of uh, confidence to take to those games, yeah. Well, it's certainly going to be a very exciting week ahead. That's all we've got time for today. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas and we'll be back afterwards to preview the game against Manchester United. Thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas.